So I think the order actually got stuffed up um, and I was meant to go before Helen and uh, now I know why. Uh, <laughs> tough act to follow. Um, Helen definitely downplayed, I guess, what the message, you know, the lessons she can, she can give you. Um, but actually, you know, has an, amazing, has an amazing career and a great story to tell. Um, I'm being 100% honest when I say I don't. Um, who, who, is, who is younger than 28? Yeah. So I'm 28. Um, so everyone here has probably got a lot more experience than me. So I guess um, for me, when I thought about this, it, it, my career or, or success or know, such as it is, is, is probably very much linked to, um, I guess, the success of Uber. Um, and probably the, that defining feature definitely now, and I think possibly moving forward is, is you know, working, working in a business like that. So that's probably, you know, more interesting than me talking about what I've done or, you know, who I, who I am, um, is talking about, I guess, you know, what the impact is of being in a business that, that moves it moves at that speed. Um, to put in context, I joined Uber in April last year um, in Melbourne, just before we launched UberX. Uh, the business in Melbourne is probably about 45 times bigger than it was when I started in April last year. So a business that grows at that rate um, obviously just creates opportunities for whoever's, whoever's there. So I started to think about well, what are those things that, that I guess define Uber's success and then link that back to you know, anything that I guess I could share on, on my, my career. And there are three sort of things that I came to. And the, and the first one's just timing, um, how important timing is. The second one is, I guess, that, like, that uneasiness with settling, just ne never settling. Um, and then the third is just focus on, on what really matters. And I think some of the message has probably been uh, reflected by others here tonight. So I guess if I, if I think about timing, when you think about the advent of Uber, you know, you need the um, smartphone to exist. So the smartphone gets invented and then th that creates the conditions for a product like Uber to be born. And then um, you have, you know, credit crunch, global financial crisis. It sort of really changes the economy, changes employment, workplaces, all that sort of thing. Um, and so you kind of create the, 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 that conditions where people are starting to think, well, hang on, what's a, what are different ways of doing things? Because possibly what we're doing in the past hasn't worked. And so you, you add them together. Um, and, you know, Uber, Uber can come to life. For me, when I think about timing, I, I worked in consulting. When I started my career as a graduate, um, it's actually up in Brisbane, uh, business was booming and um, got lots of opportunity. There just wasn't enough people, got to work way above my pay grade. As a result, my career advanced really quickly. Then I transferred down to Melbourne. Um, market had tanked, wasn't as much work, everyone's fighting over less work, and as a result, you kind of stagnate. Um, so when I think about, when I think about, and, that, and that's not through me not trying or me not being capable or anything else, it's just where you land. So then when I think about the timing of Uber, I, I, as I said, I probably, I've got my Uber story, I, you know, I regularly people tell me theirs, so you know, I'll bore you with, with mine quickly. I'd heard about Uber probably 2013, I was in San Francisco, I was with a mate, I said, oh, we're going to try this thing to get a lift. We're down, I don't know if anyone knows San Francisco, down in Barcadero there, Saturday morning, very busy traffic this way, order the Uber, Uber's coming from kind of a couple of blocks sort of in that direction. See on the phone that, you know, if he comes down, he'll have to drive up, do a U-turn, it'll take 15 minutes, press the button, call him, say, hey, meet me across the road. This is my first time, so I'm working it out as I go. We walk across the road, get in, clean Prius, offers me water, nice, young, hipster-looking dude, had a good chat, um, get to the end of the ride. My mate's in the back, he didn't know what Uber was, so he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> and we just, we just, you know, we get out of the car, no money changes hands. I'd been in the front, he'd been in the back. And uh, he, you know, I turn around and he, and he looked at me, this like stunned expression, you know, what just happened? Um, <laughs> the future. Um, so yeah, so I think for me, then I came back, I followed Uber, joined when there was a few people in Melbourne, um, joined before UberX launched in Melbourne. Just, you know, a lot of those, you think about the chances of that, all that happening. The timing there was great. Had I, had I joined at the same time in, in the US where the growth had already, you know, it's grown astronomically since then, but much more established, 
then my career opportunities wouldn't have been the same. So for me, there's just a lot of, lot of, you know, I didn't know about Uber and be keen to follow it and all the above, but there is that element of timing, which, you know, was really fortunate for me. Um, the second one, that, that never settling thing, like it's not, I don't think, you know, people always tell you, oh, you gotta bust your ass and work a million hours and all that. So it's not, it's not that that I'm, I would say in terms of never settling, it's just that like being uneasy sort of with, with the status quo and kind of always thinking about, well, how do we, you know, how do we improve? How do we just edge a little bit forward? And so I never made any rash decisions in my career or anything like that, but absolutely, you know, thought about things and wasn't happy with where I was. And I probably made about, you know, three or four decisions. I studied law, like, and I worked out before I started practicing that it was a bad idea. Went into consulting, because I was like, well, at least it sort of expands my opportunities. Um, and, you know, that, that kind of decision, leaving Brisbane, coming to Melbourne, I left consulting, actually opened, went and opened a restaurant with my brother, um, still ticking along nicely. Uh, though that a combination of experience is when I went to apply for the job at Uber, you know, they said, oh, well, consulting, okay, process, analytical, all that sort of thing. You've opened a restaurant, you're entrepreneurial, that's sort of what we look for. It kind of like not settling, I guess, actually kind of led me towards, um, towards Uber. And when I think about what we do every day there is just like do not settle at all. Um, just constantly looking, how do, we, how do we turn the wheel a little bit? Small changes, what impact can that have? And it's not, not, not necessary, it's not sexy stuff we do or anything like that. It's just like, if I change the wording on this bit of comms, will it result in X percentage more drivers coming through the door and what impact will that have on group? Just basic stuff. So that, that not settling, I think, um, you know, such as it has helped me, but definitely it's, I think, a massive driver for, for any business and, and finding people who aren't willing to settle to work with you. That's kind of, that's, that's definitely huge for me. The, th the third one, um, just focus on what matters. I think both Cole and Helen kind of mentioned this. It, it, like politics or getting caught up in um, any of the other stuff, I think the good thing about Uber and you know, plenty of companies, definitely, probably I'm sure Etsy, Cotton On, plenty, I'm sure many of you here as well, it's kind of why you come to events like this, is that you, you try to not sweat the small stuff, don't get caught up in the little things. But then when you think about your business, you say, well, okay, what, what what is actually going to drive, um, you know, the outcome that we need? So Uber's mission um, is to make transport as reliable as running water, you know, for everyone, everywhere. That's sort of the lofty, lofty ambition and it, and it sounds pretty lofty. Um, but when you actually dial that down into like what can we do as an ops team, operations team here in Melbourne, it's, it's you know, build a supply. It just means get drivers onboarded onto the system, onto the road. It's as simple as that. And once we, once we create that, that system, we know that, you know, the technology is there and the reliability and the price is such that, that people will use it. So um, removing all that noise, not having lots of meetings and lots of pro other projects and just, like, dialing in on what you need to do. Um, I guess for me in my role at Uber, and, and I think probably our team here in Melbourne's had a lot of success relative to some of our other peers in other cities just by being super, super focused on that. And then I guess... By, I think what that means is that sometimes you make decisions that, to do things which aren't as interesting. The example I always give is um, when a city, when an Uber city starts, you have a three-person team and that three-person team does everything. Um, and that includes like customer support. So up until only a few months ago, the team in Melbourne handled every single email. I don't know if anyone here has ever emailed Uber after a trip because, you know, you didn't like the route or it's cancellation. It went to, like, one of the team of a handful of people in Melbourne and they would respond to you. So when I first started last year, I, was, I worked on the driver side. So obviously we get emails and tickets from drivers. There was a period of a couple of months there where in addition to onboarding drivers, paying drivers, communicating with drivers, all the sort of stuff I have to do, I responded to about 500 tickets or driver emails a week. So basically just customer support. Um, and my total count now I think is like 20,000 of um, support requests that I've handled. So that, that was the most important thing to do at that time to build the business. Um, not glamorous at all, but you know, that's what we had to do. And then you know, the, 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 I guess the results or whatever come later. So um, as I said, 
not, not huge amounts of wealth of experience to, <laughs> to uh, offer, offer too much on. But, but definitely, I think, for me, it's, it is about ability and you know, hard work and networking and all the above. But realistically, if you reduce it down to those th three things, find the opportunities and get there you know, at the right time, obviously. Um, and that involves a bit of luck. Um, keep just turning the wheel, not settling. And then finally, as I say, yeah, just remove everything else, focus on what you can do. And um, hopefully, you, you know, all of your businesses, and I'm sure, hopefully, I'm sure they will, will uh, be super successful. So uh, thanks very much. Thank you very much.